Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Art of Propaganda. This is the story of our infantrymen on occupation duty in Germany, and is in particular the story of PFC Bobby Van Selten, whose hobby is painting. A hobby that brings plenty of excitement to him and his buddies as they tangle with the plot to sell stolen French art masterpieces. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, and many others. You can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job and do it right. For full details about an exciting career, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and find out all the facts today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Art of Propaganda. You'll go a long way in this man's army before you find an outfit like E Company. I don't say that because it's my company either. It just happens to be true. The whole division knows about us. The commanding general himself will tell you how our company practically won the war games for the Blue Army in West Germany last year. And look who we got in the outfit. Starting from the top, Captain Malloy won the Medal of Honor in the Second World War. We got two sergeants with silver stars transferred over from Korea. Corporal Grimes is division light heavyweight champ. Private Sisko pitched a no-hit ball game for the regimental team. I tell you, man for man, and as an outfit, we rate. I'm telling you all this because you may have heard of Robert Van Sulten. And I want you to understand that if this kid pulled off a little stunt that got splashed in headlines all over the world, well, why not? Bobby Van Sulten's in E Company, isn't he? I'll let you in on a little secret. The first day I met Bobby Van Sulten, I didn't think he was going to work out at all. No, sir, he made a very bad first impression. He was fresh from the States, newly arrived with ten other replacements, and I was just finishing up my little welcoming men will have to learn that we're a little bit of everything. We're soldiers, we're ambassadors, and we're salesmen. Eight years ago, we fought in this country, and now we have to stay here, live among the people, and show them what we stand for. And every one of you is an ambassador and a salesman. Your conduct on and off duty is a direct reflection on your country. Remember that. You men are in my platoon, and our barracks is the first one on the left. You'll find your bunks and lockers, your... First formation is Reveille tomorrow morning. We fall out in fatigue. Any questions? Dismissed. Uh, uh Sergeant. Yeah? Uh, I wanted to ask Sergeant Haynes if it's all right for me to keep this in the barracks with the rest of my equipment. What the... Hey, what's that? An old-fashioned tripod for a heavy 30 caliber machine gun? <laughs> no, Sergeant. It's, uh, it's an easel. Uh, come again, soldier? It's an easel for my canvas. Canvas? What do you want with canvas? Well, you see, Sergeant, I, uh... I try to paint whenever I get a chance. Paint? What do you paint? Oh, portraits, landscapes. Sometimes I like to do some abstracts. You a painter? An artist? Well, I, I try to be. What's your name again? Uh, Van Selton. I guess it's all right. Just stash the stuff out of sight during inspection. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. Painters. Artists, they send me. Go make an infantryman out of that. What do we got here, a rifle company or an art school? (laughs) 
That night, I was finished with my shower, and I was walking through the barracks to my room. There were a bunch of guys sitting around Van Selton's bunk. I stopped for a minute. Corporal Grimes, our boxing champ, was sitting on a footlocker. Opposite him was Van Selton, who was drawing something. Finally, Van Selton looked up at Grimes and said, <clears throat> Okay, finished. Can I see it? Sure. He turned the picture around, and we saw it. Well, I didn't know what to think. It didn't look like Grimes. It didn't look like anything. Grimes was kind of puzzled. Hey, I thought you were going to paint my picture. <laughs> I did. Well, that don't look like me. It doesn't? Juan, are you kidding? Well, Grimes, an artist paints what he feels, what he senses. That's what you look like inside. Show this to any one of the guys. If they say that looks like me, I'll eat it. Grimes, it looks exactly like you. Not the way a photograph would, oh, but it... Here, go ahead. What do you guys think? Take a look at that. Well, it kind of does look like you, Grimes. Nah, yeah. it don't look like nothing at all. Well, I think it looks exactly like you. I think Robbie Boy's kidding the public. He just throws paint on a canvas any old way. I took a good look at it, and mind you, I don't know the first thing about art. But you know something? In a way, a way I can't explain, it looked like Grimes, exactly. But if you looked at it another way, it didn't look like anything. It was the weirdest picture I ever saw. Grimes was getting a little upset. I thought you would paint a picture I could send home to the old lady. I'll take it. It's yours. I think your mother will be proud to own it. I look like some kind of monster. No, you don't. You're a guy with tremendous physical power, strength. Oh. That's what I tried to convey on canvas, the tremendous sweep and vitality. I see kids in kindergarten can draw better than that. While they were talking, I kept looking at the picture, and all of a sudden, everything in it seemed to move and click into place. It was Grimes, all right. Not only the way he looked, but also, if you can get this, the way you felt about Grimes when you looked at him. Suddenly, Grimes reached over and grabbed the picture. Now, you say this is my picture, Belongs to me. Sure. I can do anything I want with it. Huh? Of course, it's yours. Well, here's what I want to do with it. That's what I think of the picture. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah? Well, if you weighed 20 pounds more, we'd step outside and I'd do something else. I was hoping you'd understand, Grimes, because you're an artist, too. Me, an artist? Yes. You're a boxer. The fight is an art, isn't it? I'm a boxer, all right, but I don't kid the public. When I fight, everybody knows it. When you paint pictures, all you're doing is working a swindle. You call that junk a picture? Yes, I call it a picture, uh, even if you're too thick-headed to see it. Look, you tell me you're going to paint my picture. I said, fine. So you draw a picture of, of, of something that looks like a monkey. Okay. Now, I don't have to take any lip in the bargain. If you weigh 20 pounds more... Oh, don't let the 20 pounds stop you. Anytime you can find some gloves... I to... got some gloves right in my footlocker. All right, what are we waiting for? Hey, Robbie, don't be crazy. Hey, don't pick on him, Grimes. Okay, break it up. Forget it, Grimes. Van Salton Grimes is a nice guy. Don't get him mad. He's not out to steam you up. The two of you shake hands and forget it. Okay, by me. Sergeant, this is just between Grimes and me. No one has any right to destroy a painting. We're not going to have any fights in this outfit. We're not fighting. Two men have a right to put on the gloves and spar a little bit, don't they? If you put it that way, I guess they do. But I don't mind telling you you're crazy. I'm ready any time you are, Grimes. All right, let's go. <laughs> You have to understand, Grimes was the kind of boxer who'd look good in any professional ring. He knew his business. But this tall, lanky, red-headed kid, Van Selton, knew what to do with his hands and feet. He kept moving in and out, just jabbing, and he had Grimes way off balance. The fellows who were watching could hardly believe their eyes. Van Selton kept moving in and scoring with quick combinations. Grimes kept missing. Suddenly, Van Selton landed with a quick right, and Grimes dropped to the floor. He got up very slowly, very cautiously, and started landing a few hard jabs to Van Selton's jaw. Then there was a quick right hook, and Van Selton was down. He jumped up very quickly, but Grimes pushed him away with both hands. All right, back up, kid, back up. I don't want to hurt you. You're good, but you can't hit hard enough to keep away. Anyhow, I got to ask you something. Yeah, what? Where'd that right hand come from? <laughs> I never did see it. You know, if you could hit harder, I'd have, I'd have been down with the count. How'd you do it? I don't know, just mixing up the punches, giving you what you weren't looking for. Yeah. That's how I paint pictures, too. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry about the picture, kid. Maybe I should have looked at it a little bit harder. Huh? Here, it isn't torn so bad. Maybe we paste it up. Huh? Well, they picked up the torn pieces of canvas, and they started talking. And I know how guys become buddies in the Army. I could tell these two were going to be good friends. How do you like that Van Selton? Who could imagine a guy who paints pictures being so good with the gloves? That was the start of it. Everybody in the outfit wanted Van Selton to do his picture, and the kid was kept plenty busy. He even painted my picture. 
Well, anyway, things were quiet with us. We were just pulling drill and training and guard duty. And then it happened. Van Salton, Grimes, and myself were walking down a street in western Berlin one Sunday afternoon. Hey, what are all them people doing along the sidewalk there? Yeah, there must be hundreds of them. Hey, you know what it looks like? It's some kind of outdoor exhibition. Listen, you know, maybe there's some good paintings. Let's take a look. Uh, I bet none of them guys can draw like you. I don't know. Some of this looks like first-rate stuff. Look at us. Grimes, me, and you. Six weeks ago, if anyone would have told us, we'd be going around to art exhibitions. Hey, Robbie, look, look at this guy's picture. <laughs> guy's got no idea of perspective. Listen to him. <laughs> well, he handles colors nice, though. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? I think I know that man. Which man? The man with the black Homburg. Talking to that young guy? Yeah, come on. Excuse me, sir. Could you tell me the name of that man you were talking with just now? Him? Oh, uh, uh, that's Herr Anders. 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 No, that name isn't familiar. Well, tell me, uh, do you know Mr. Anders? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, he comes to the exhibition each year. Uh, he always buys a painting. Anders, Anders. No, I don't think I know him. Well, here comes your boy back again, Robbie. Take a good look at him. I uh, think I would like to take the landscape home. I would like to look at it a bit more closely. Of course, Herr Anders. It can't be. Professor Morell. Professor Morell. You are addressing me, young soldier? Professor Morell. I am afraid you are mistaken, young man. Oh, no, no. You're Professor Morell. You wouldn't recognize me. I was only a little kid, but you spent a whole summer at our house in Wisconsin. You were lecturing at the university. You, you must remember my father, Professor Edward Van Selton. I'm sorry, but I am not your Professor Morell. My father teaches art at the university, remember? Uh, Hans. Please tell these soldiers who I am. Well, well uh, you are Herr Anders. Well, how do you know his name is Anders? How? Well, <laughs> because he told me. Now, if you'll excuse me, Hans, I shall return your landscape tomorrow. What's the matter, Bobby? Looks like you've seen a ghost. I, I did. This guy is supposed to be dead. Which way did he go? I don't know. It's so crowded around here, I lost There him. he is. I see him. I'll be right back. Hey, Robbie. Robbie, wait a minute. Now, where did he go? Uh huh? Right into this apartment house. Now, let's see. Where are the names? Okay, mister, if you want to insist your name is Anders, we'll let it go for now. Anders. Anders. Uh huh. Here it is. First floor. I guess this must be the door. Okay. Come in. Uh, hello? Say, where are you? Right here. <gasps> I expected you might come after me. Be good enough to raise your hands. I. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hailed production, The Art of Propaganda. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. I suppose all of us at one time or another have seen the principle of strength through unity demonstrated by a handful of sticks. Singly, they can be broken very easily. But when bound together, why, it's practically impossible to break them. And so it is with our America. Working together as a team we can be certain that our freedoms and our democratic way of life will never be broken. And one of the most important members of Freedom's team is your United States Army, a high-spirited, well-equipped organization that offers unequaled opportunities to modern young men and women who want to get ahead in good-paying, interesting careers. Today, the Army has a new career program in operation that permits you to choose your own course of training, in the skill that best suits your aptitudes and interests. So I suggest you find out about it. Visit your nearest Army recruiting station. You'll be amazed at just how much the Army can offer you. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Art of Propaganda. <laughs> I knew you would follow me the moment you recognized me. The moment you called me Morell, I knew you would follow me. Professor Morell, what's come over you? 
You were my father's best friend, and you're, you're pointing a gun at me. That's true. Your father, I knew him well. Well, what am I to do with you? Well, what's the matter? Why do you call yourself Anders? What are you doing here in Germany, in Berlin? I am here because... because no one knows me. No one recognized me until you did this afternoon. And now you will write to your father. You will tell him about me, and then everyone will know where I am. They will come after me. No, I will not let it happen. I will not let you take Robert Mac. Huh? Watch him, Sarge. Uh, you all right, Robbie? Yeah. Hey, Robbie, what kind of friends are you got? Okay, Mac, up off the floor. What should we do with him? Take him back to the company, tell the old man the story, and see if this is for the army or the civilian cops. You tried to kill me, Professor Morell. Why? My name is not Morell. It is Anders. You, you broke in here. I thought perhaps you were a robber. You admitted to me that your name was Morell. Morell or Anders, let's let the cops puzzle it out. How'd you fellas get here? Robbie, if you use your head, nothing's difficult. All we did was ask the guy who's selling the paintings where this bird lived. He told us, and we strolled over. Well, I wish you hadn't come when you did. Listen to him. The guy had a Luga pointed at your head. Oh, Grimes, he wouldn't have shot me. He was already to tell me something, and now... Now what? Why do you deny that your name is Morell? My name is Anders. I have papers to prove it. Oh, papers, papers. At the end of the war, anybody could have gotten papers. All right, so your name is Anders, and you're a German citizen. Where do you come from? I am a native of the Weimar. Well, that's great. Weimar's in the other zone. We could never check on it. Okay, we don't have to. After all, this man hasn't done anything wrong. What do you mean? He had a gun on you. He shot it. All right, but I entered his house, didn't I? Look, maybe I made a mistake. He looks like a guy my father knew, but I could be wrong. I'm sorry, sir. I, I apologize. Come on, fellas. Yeah, but Robbie... Come on, come on, let's go. Okay, Robbie, this has been your party. If you say it's over. I'm sorry, Herr Anders. I, I thought you were someone else. Good day, sir. Hey, what's the idea? Not here. Grimes, around the back way, quick. See if there's a back entrance. Stick around. If he moves out, follow him. Yeah, but I... Look, I... look, do it. Please, I'll explain later. Sergeant, let's duck into that cafe across the street where we can watch the front door. Hey, Robbie, I don't go around pulling rank, but it seems to me you're making a lot of command decisions for just a PFC. Well, let's get into this place. Maybe I can explain it. Can you see the door from here? Yeah. All right, now tell me. Did you ever hear of Veronese, of Van Dyck? Veronese doesn't register. I think a Van Dyke is a kind of beard. Well, both of them were great painters, old masters. I can't tell you how much their paintings are worth today because, well, money doesn't begin to, to express their value. Sergeant, if you have one of their paintings, you can name your price. Fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars. Money is no object. Now, this guy is Professor Morell. There's no doubt about it. Well, so what are you getting at, Robbie? During the last war, when France was overrun, Morell was one of a lot of trusted guys who were assigned artworks to conceal. So when the war was over, all the guys who had this detail brought the stuff out of hiding, all but one. That was Morell. He disappeared. So this guy has got himself these old paintings, huh? Yeah, my father knew all about it. Because he has friends who were in the French underground, and that's how I know. I recognized Morell right off the reel, but what could I do? Could I go up to him and say, Morell, where are those paintings? Well, you could have called a cop. You could have done what I wanted to do, take him in. I had to make sure he was Morell first. So I played it innocent and dumb. All right, now he knows I know that he's Morell, but he has no reason to believe that I know why he's hiding in Germany. He figures I'll write to my father and tell him I ran into Morell. My father will get all excited and start burning up the wires to the French authorities, the German police, the U.S. Army. Sure, but that has to take a little time. You know, Robbie, in baseball, they say every good first baseman wants to pitch, and every good infantryman wants to be a guy from G2. Okay, you got reason to believe this guy is named Morell. You think he's got a couple of million bucks worth of stolen pictures. All we have to do is bring him in. They'll bring in some French art people who would have known this guy or sent him back to France, and that's the ball game. What are we slinking around this joint like a bunch of private eyes for? Well, you or the gentleman. A couple of beers. But Sergeant, you missed the point. Okay, arrest the guy. Have him positively identified as Morell. Then what? How does that get the paintings back? So they'll send him to jail, all right. But if he keeps his mouth shut, those paintings will still be AWOL. So what are we supposed to do? Wait for him to make a move. He's sweating and guessing. If he thinks I've gone to the cops, he'll just stay in his room and wait to be arrested. But if he thinks that I don't know anything, and if he thinks he's still got time before my letter can get back to my old man in the States, he's got to do something. Yeah? What? Well, I don't know. Start running. Get the paintings. Go somewhere else. Hide somewhere. Yeah, but suppose he sold the paintings already. No. He couldn't have sold the paintings. Why not? 
because no one would be stupid enough to buy them. Well, so if he knew he couldn't sell them, why did he steal them? I wish I knew. Oh, all you artists, you gotta be crazy. Your peers, gentlemen. There he goes, Sergeant. Come on. Uh, here you are. Keep the change. But but you do not drink. Is something wrong with your service? Robbie, this is no good. Huh? What do you mean? Whoever this guy is, he's no fool. He's sure to spot us. Let's keep close to the buildings. Well, the streets aren't too crowded, and besides, we're in uniform. Unless, uh, yeah, but that'd be crazy. Listen, stay here. I'm going to duck around the corner and get Grimes. But Morell will get away. No, he won't. Believe me, he won't. But, Sergeant... Robbie, stand here and wait. And that's an order. I sent Grimes back to the company. He's been standing in front of that store looking at the window. There. There, he's walking away. He came back just in time. I'll bet. Hey, what are you smiling at, Sergeant? Nothing. Don't lose sight of your man. I wonder where he's going. Morell or Anders or whatever his name was, walked slowly along the street. We followed him as he walked for almost a mile across town. Finally, he stopped in front of a large apartment building, paused a minute or so at the entrance, and then disappeared inside. How we know which apartment he went into? I think we'll know. Look, who do you think we are? Indian scouts from the old Wild West? This guy knows we've been tailing him. You think he wouldn't have lost us if he really wanted to? He wants us to follow him. I don't understand. Look, you're an expert on painting and art, and you've got a fantastic memory for faces. That's about as far as your talents go in this case. Now, you follow me. All right. How do we know which apartment? There's at least 50 names over these bells. Well, let me look. Why, sure enough, fella. Here, see this name, Ritter? Yeah, what about it? The paper's torn. I'll bet your boy did that to leave a signal. Ritter, first floor, front. Should we ring the bell? How much do you want to bet he left the inside door open for us? Try it. See, I told you. Well, that should be it. Be quiet. Hey, I hear voices. He even left that door open, too. Sergeant, that's the gun you took from Morell. What are you thinking of? What does anyone think of when he has a gun? He's thinking he might have to use it. But, Sergeant... Be quiet. Let's sneak up slowly. You are uh, ready to buy the paintings? Um, if they are genuine. I see. I uh, have invited Mr. Rulenko here to inspect them. We have been waiting for them. Well, they are here. I have kept them in this closet. Three by Veronese, three by Van Dyke. Mr. Rulenko... If you please. Are these guys crazy? No legitimate no, art dealer no, would buy those paintings. Robbie, well, my boy, the longer you live, the more you find out there are lots of people in the world who aren't on the level. Now, shut up. Well, Mr. Rulenko? Well, I, I need more time, but at the first impression, I would say these are genuine. Shall we pay him the money? Oh, definitely. The propaganda value of these is inestimable, provided, of course, that... Provided what? Provided, my dear professor, that you come along with us. But I have no desire to go to your country. These paintings were entrusted to you. You have seen fit to deliver them to us for safekeeping because you do not trust your own government. Any other way would be stealing. <laughs> A fine, very fine legal distinction, but it will serve. Only the people's democracy appreciates and can care for great art. I have changed my mind. I do not wish to sell them. I'm afraid it's a bit too late for that. Watch him, Kronoff. Come on, Robbie. Tommy broke up the party. Kronoff, soldiers, shoot them. Uh, 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 drop it, buddy. Uh, good punch, Robbie. Friend Kronoff will be out of action for a while. Where are you going, pal? Professor Morell. Robert, I'm afraid Kronoff shot me. I saw what you did. You jumped in front of him. You saved one of us. Robert, this is the best way for me. I was crazy. I, I thought I could keep the paintings. I, I don't know what came over me. I wanted them for my own, to enjoy them. But I needed money, and last week I arranged with the only people who would be able to take them off my hands. Oh, oh, hello, Captain. Uh, Graham's told us you'd need some help. Well, who are these people? Well, I'm sure there must be something on them in intelligence, sir. Well, the one on the floor looks like Kronoff. He's a suspected red agent. Robert... I wanted you to follow me, Robert, to stop me if you could. Take the whole matter out of my hands, and you did. We better get this fellow to a hospital. Robert, I would not have gone through with it. You, you know that. 
For years I had been a fool, Robert, but do not tell it, your father. Then... What are all these pictures? They, they're masterpieces. They've been stolen from the French government. That's right, sir. And Private Van Selten here discovered the whole plot. Yeah? Well, Van Selten, you're about to become a celebrity. Who's this fellow who got killed? His name is... is Anders. Just as it says in his papers. Well, that's about it. The paintings were returned to France. Robbie got decorated by just about everybody. And there's no question that he deserved it. What everybody believed was that Morel was killed during the war, and the paintings fell into the hands of a man named Anders. And, of course, Robbie was proud of his part in the deal. But I think what made him feel even prouder was the fact that he got the next open rating in the outfit. The very next job of painting he did was to neatly paint two black stripes on his fatigue shirt. So far, he said, uh, that painting is his masterpiece. Young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many, many others. Yes, indeed. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you later in civilian life, too. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>